what's going on guys it's omniarc and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be talking about scipio africanus in rise of kingdoms now i'm fully aware that i'm probably pronouncing his name wrong but scipio is probably one of the most common and most popular commanders in rise of kingdoms especially in the early game now i do think that scipio really shines early on in a kingdom however i still use scipio at 50 million power and what i find fascinating is that there's a lot of youtubers and pay to win players who like to say oh you know season two season three scipio is completely worthless he's trash um and i don't agree with that i don't agree um i do think that he is way more usable in the early game than he is late game um but what i love about scipio is that he's so easy to use like you really once you get the talent build and you understand what his role is it's really hard to mess him up like he's such a versatile commander um, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about how I use Scipio what I think his best use is and why players are saying he's not good in the late game because they do they do have a solid argument right and I and I don't think you know I don't think that he's one of the best epic commanders in the game um, but he is still very usable for his use and we're gonna talk about that now the first thing to mention about Scipio is how you can obtain him uh, if you guys started with the Rome civilization at the beginning of your playthrough then you already have Scipio he's the first commander that you unlocked um, he's not a bad commander to start with but I do think that there are better options um, such as Joan of Arc or Sun Tzu or maybe even Boudicca early game just because she is a peacekeeper however Scipio is still a really good epic commander again I still use him at 50 million power um, so let's talk talk a little bit about you know once you have Scipio right if you if you didn't start with him you get him from uh opening chests you can get him from silver keys or you can summon him with gold keys and then from there you can actually use your universal epic commander sculptures to level him up um in the early game you know a lot of people forget that uh epics are kind of hard to get you know you do get a steady stream of them but there are so many of them that if you're really focusing on one um it does tend to be a little bit difficult to obtain uh sculptures for just one so if you're having trouble getting scipio you can pump your universals into him and there are plenty of opportunities to earn universal commander sculptures one of the best ways to do it is through seasonal events right now we have the farewell winter event and this is a very common five day event um, and the number of points that you have in this top bar at the end of the event is the number of universal epic sculptures you will obtain so if you get a full 100 out of 100 at the end of this event they will give you 100 universal epic commander sculptures and you can pump all of them into somebody like Scipio if that's who you're focusing on um, and keep in mind that if some of these are very difficult to finish you don't have to finish all of them if you only get 99 out of 100 then you'll get 99 epic commander sculptures you're only one difference so it's up to you but that's a really great way for you to earn Scipio if you're having trouble getting him now let's talk a little bit about what Scipio does and why I like him um if you look at his three talent trees right he has the leadership tree the conquering tree and the attack tree the leadership tree is kind of unique because there aren't that many uh commanders that um that have it especially not ones that free-to-play players would use I think the only other epic that has it is Osman um Scipio the 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 conquering tree is for rallying um cities and objectives and the attack tree is a broad over uh basically a general attack buffing tree um unlike you know somebody who, um like pelagius who has a cavalry tree that boosts specifically cavalry um attack will bo will boost all units although by a smaller amount and it also has a couple of unique little features in there that we're going to exploit using scipio with that being said let's talk about Scipio's skills because this is where he really shines his first skill is his best skill as is the case for most commanders in the game um, it's called military life requires 1000 rage and it reduces the damage taken by troops by 25 percent and increases troops counterattack damage by 25 percent for five seconds for five seconds now most of these active skills for a lot of these commanders range anywhere from two to three seconds and that's even for legendary commanders so the fact that this lasts for five seconds is really 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 good um you know he's he's most likely gonna have this ability active 
for most of the time that he is in battle, right? At least 50% or more of the time he will have this skill active. His next skill is called Patient Warrior. Um, and I have this actually expertise. So normally it is when attacked, Scipio has a 10% chance to increase his troops attack by 100%. So doubling attack for one second, not that great. Um, effects can only trigger once every five seconds. So it does have a cap and cooldown. Uh, and Scipio has a 10% chance to also heal a portion of his slightly wounded units by a healing factor of 450 when his army has less than 40% of units remaining. Once you expertise him, it bumps up to a 15% chance to double his attack for two seconds, which is a bit better. That puts him on par with other skills, active skills um, that other commanders have, like I said earlier. Um, it also has a 15% chance to heal a portion of slightly wounded by 500. So the healing factor gets a little bit better as well once you expertise him. His third skill is um, called Conqueror of Africa. It increases all damage by 7% when attacking other governor cities. So when you're attacking another player in a rally, 7% damage boost across the board. Uh, and then his final skill is Genuine Aristocracy or Arist aristocracy sorry um this increases maximum troop capacity by 10 percent this is very very good um there are only a couple of commanders that increase troop capacity by more than 10 percent and they are legendary commanders so as a epic commander this is a very very good skill and it puts Scipio in a very unique position with that being said if you look at all of these skills basically what this is saying is Scipio is a tank unit right He's taking 25% less damage pretty much all the time. He's also uh, healing some of his troops with a healing factor of 500 once his army gets low. And he can bring 10% more troops to the battlefield, which means he'll have 10% more um, units to survive, right? He'll have 10%. That's kind of like increasing your survivability by 10% because you have more units right so Scipio is a very tanky unit and in my opinion he's probably the best tanky unit in the epic tier and one of the reasons for that is because of the 10 percent troop capacity but also his military life active skill and again the only other um epic commander that even would come close to this would be osman but osman even though he does increase troop capacity by 10 percent um and he does have the leadership and conquering trees he doesn't have the attack tree which is really 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 useful for for scipio especially for tanking and also um osman is really good at skill damage and so if you're going to pick one of the two to be your tanky unit um osman is, is actually has a better use somewhere else whereas scipio really doesn't scipio really has one usage and that is tanking so between the two i would say build scipio as a tank and osman as a skill damage um uh, skill damage commander now you also could argue that Scipio is good for rallying cities because he does increase damage by 7% and he also does have the conquering tree, which is useful for attacking enemy cities. However, I am a, a firm believer and a strong believer that you shouldn't be rallying cities with an epic commander. Now, the only exception to this is very early game, very early on when you just when nobody has a good rallying commander then Scipio is your best option, right? That That's just going to be the case in those scenarios. But he's very quickly um, outclassed by many, many, many legendary commanders when it comes to rallying. Um, so I would, you know, unless you're very early game, I would hold off um, with rallying player cities with an epic commander. That being said, he is technically your best option from the epic tier. Um, maybe Osman is probably a little bit better at rallying cities, but again i'm going to be focusing on building scipio as a tanky unit right so let's talk a little bit about his talents now that we've talked about what scipio is right he's a tank unit um and he's really going to be battling in the open field right you're not going to be defending your city with scipio he would be terrible at that um you're not going to be really rallying other player cities because you know he's just not he's not as good as some of the other options other you know other players probably have legendary commanders that are better at that so really scipio is going to be a tanky unit in the open field so how can we build him with his talents to do that now 
keep in mind my Scipio is level 55 so I'm still missing five talent points for Scipio um, if you didn't know you do get 74 talent points I know I wish it was 75 but it's 74 talent points to distribute however you please amongst these um, different talents um, the reason for that is because you get one for every level up so you don't get any for level one but up until 60 so that's 59 points for leveling up to max then you get five for getting him to five stars and then 10 for getting him to six stars so that's a total of uh 74 talent points which is useful to know when you're planning ahead right because you don't want to waste a talent reset when you're building a commander you really want to build you want to start you know right when you start leveling up a commander you want to know what you're going to use them with or use them for um and so i would recommend like i said building Scipio as a tanky unit now there's a couple of really key th uh, key things here that are useful for Scipio and like I said before he differs from Osman in the fact that he has this attack tree so let's talk about the attack tree first because I think it's interesting um the first thing I want to talk about is Lord of War when troops led by this commander enter battle increases attack by and then it's actually a formula 1.5 times commander star level so if your Scipio is at six stars this increases your attack by nine percent just across the board right that's really good that's something I would really focus on right that's a really really good um talent to have especially once you get him to six stars right really early on um it's only going to increase your attack by 1.5 percent at one star not really that useful um, but once you start to get him to six stars that's a very very powerful talent and it's really good because it's easy to obtain right you put one point here three points here three points here you're done the next thing I want to talk about is burning blood this will actually gain more rage every time your unit is attacked the reason that this is good is one because Scipio is a tank which means that he's going to be getting attacked a lot which means he's going to generate a lot of rage and that will help push out his first skill which again that will actually reduce damage taken by 25 percent so the more that skill goes off the better and burning blood is going to help that and then you see i worked my way over to effortless and what this does is during battles increases all damage dealt by 2.5 percent every 10 seconds up to 10 percent so basically what this is saying is that as long as Scipio is in a longer battle right a battle that lasts at least 10 seconds uh, it's going to increase his damage dealt all damage dealt by 10 percent again that's really good for a tanky unit because odds are you know especially in a 1v1 Scipio is gonna last that long right he's gonna last that long unless you're versing a t5 pay to win player um so again boosting damage by 10 percent here really 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 good now the last thing that i want to talk about is this over here called martial mastery and this increases normal attack damage by six percent but decreases active skill damage by three percent this is very very good because if you're pairing Scipio um, with a commander that has no active skill damage right because we already looked at his skills Scipio has no active skill damage so as long as he's paired with another commander that also has no active skill damage there's literally no downside to using this talent and that's exactly what I do it's a free six percent boost to your normal attack damage might as well get it right might as well get it next I want to talk about some really key things here in the leadership tree again we ignored the conquering tree because I'm not going to be attacking player cities with Scipio um, the first thing that's really useful here is called fresh recruits straight up increases maximum troop capacity by three percent this is really great he already brings 10 percent more troops to the battlefield now you get another three percent on top of that really awesome and it really plays to Scipio's strengths um, we also made our way up here to close formation when this army when the army led by this commander has been reduced to 50 percent strength increases attack by 12 percent right 12 percent so suddenly once you drop under 50 percent you're doing 12 percent more damage on top of the fact that around that time is when you're going to be um hitting that effortless skill and it's also going to be when you are reduced to um I, I don't know if there's any other skills here that that benefit you under 50 percent but regardless um this is really really great especially for a tank who you know it just boosts damage once he starts to take more so it's really really good to know um the other thing that i'm going to be getting maxed out once i get more levels on scipio is strategic prowess after using a skill increases troop defense by five percent for the next two seconds and i imagine that this will scale up um the more that you put points into it so i don't know what the cap is um i don't think i have any commanders that have this at cap and i'm too lazy to look it up but 
this is non-negotiable i'm going to be putting four points in it because again you want to increase the defense right because that's going to be even more tanky let's take a look at some of the other things that we have here we have arm to the teeth i actually put all three points into here even though it's optional because it says when armies led by this commander contain three or more different unit types all damage dealt is increased by three percent so this is saying if you have a mixed army increase damage by three percent that's what we're going to be doing a Scipio and we'll talk about how I use Scipio in the open field in a second and why that will make more sense over here it says when armies led by this commander contain three or more different unit types all damage taken is reduced by three percent so this is the same thing mixed army reduced damage taken by three percent really awesome this increases normal attack by 1.5 percent that's not crazy grants more rage which is awesome anytime you're attacked you grant more rage um this will enhance healing effects received by troops by nine percent which is awesome because Scipio does do some healing so again mine's level 55 that means I have five more more points to put into Scipio I'm going to put four here and then my last point I don't really know where I'm going to put it um maybe I'll I'll put it here or maybe I will put it maybe in unyielding i'm not really sure this final talent here is actually useless for the way that we're using scipio because this says when this commander launches a rally attack increase attack of the rallied army by one percent and i imagine that goes up to five percent when you put all five points in it but again we're not going to rally so there's no point in putting any points here <clears throat> and then if we look at last stand um this says normal troop attacks have a 10 percent chance to cause this commander's troop to go on a rampage which increases damage by two percent for three seconds but skills can't be used for the duration of this effect so this is actually not good for Scipio because you're only getting a small damage increase which probably goes up to 10 percent when you have all five points but um what you want on Scipio is to have him popping off this active skill as much as he can right as much as he can with the very minimal rage engine that he does have um and so you know not being able to pop this skill off is really detrimental to Scipio because this is where a lot of his tankiness comes from and so that's the reason that I didn't go all the way with the attack tree so actually having a mix between the attack tree and the leadership tree provides Scipio with the most amount of benefit that um you could possibly have with him right and so this is what i would recommend um, i would recommend this exact build if again if you're not going to pair him with somebody that has skill damage that's your best option um again putting four points into here and then the last point should probably go in um either this um right here the health of all troops you could put it in unyielding or you could put it in uh here the attack of all troops is half a percent that's you know you could do that as well that's another option that's um, what I would recommend for building Scipio, right? Those are my talent builds. With that being said, I would recommend having Scipio as a primary commander. Um, because again, he is unique in that he is, his skills are very tanky. And also, um, his talents are very unique, right? He has the, uh, leadership and the attack tree, which is very, very useful because of the way that we built him. And there's really not a reason to build him any other way than this, right? Again, the only other time you would build him some other way is if you build out that conquering tree and that's if you're rallying cities, which, you know, again, if he's your only option, then yes, I would build out the conquering tree, but otherwise this is probably your best bet in my opinion. Now, with that being said, how should you use Scipio in the open fields and who should you pair with Scipio if he's going to be, uh, your, you know, your primary commander, right? Well, first off let's talk about what can you do with a tanky unit right because a lot of times when people say you know oh i'm gonna go we're gonna fight in the open fields um i want to deal as much damage as possible tanky units uh kind of get overlooked in that regard right and this is why i use Scipio still at 50 million power because what he can do is bring along joan of arc and that's what i love to do with Scipio. i love to bring Scipio primary super super tanky and then in the secondary slot i mean he was basically built to bring joan of arc onto the field right because he doesn't have any active skill damage which means he gets the benefit of this talent right here martial mastery um and you can pair him with joan of arc who's pretty much i think the only other epic commander that doesn't have active skill damage right um I mean, what about does Belisarius? I think he does as well, right? I'm not really sure, but let's take a look. Um, okay, so Belisarius, it looks like 
he has a small damage factor not that big of a deal um so yeah belisarius maybe but scipio was really built he was really built to bring joan of arc on the battlefield right and why do you want joan of arc well first off if you're going to be fighting in the open field you pretty much always want joan of arc nearby right because if you guys aren't familiar i've talked about joan of arc in the past on my other videos but when she is expertise she has a skill called divine revelation and this um for the next four seconds grants her troops and nearby friendly forces so not only your troops but other players other uh allies right it gives them a powerful buff that increases infantry units health by 30 percent which is great because infantry is tanky and that's what tanks want increases cavalry units defense by 30 percent and increases archer units attack by 30 percent and also grants an additional 50 rage per second for the next four seconds so that's 200 rage which will go towards popping off scipio's primary skill so not only um is scipio going to be very tanky he's going to get buffed by joan of arc and the point of bringing scipio as a tank to the battlefield is to have joan of arc last as long as possible right you want her active skill to go off as many times as you can and by keeping her on the battlefield super long um, which is what scipio is built to do she's going to be buffing your armies for as long as possible right and this is why i use scipio at 50 million power it's not because he does a ton of damage and it's not because he's the best epic it's because he is probably one of the best uh commanders to keep joan of arc alive on the battlefield and what she's going to do is enable the other armies that i and my allies have on the battlefield to deal more damage and survive even longer right on top of that joan of arc also has a healing factor just like scipio does and scipio also has talents that will buff the amount that the healing works um i do have to do this verification give me one second and on top of that healing factor which again adds to the tankiness she also increases normal attack damage rate 25 percent so that's cool right you just get a 25 percent damage buff with Scipio that's awesome right that's really awesome and so this pair right here is one of my favorite pairs in the game right not only is it super tanky and it will buff everyone around you that's stronger than you right all the t5 players are going to get that Joan of Arc buff as long as Scipio is on the field and he's built to last as long as possible now the way that you make this the most usable is by when you're fighting in the open fields having all five of your armies kind of focused on the same targets or in the same clump general area right um and so you have to start to think about okay i only have five armies right and, and if you're not city hall 25 you actually may only have four armies to bring to the field or three armies to bring to the field right and so i would say if you only have three armies to bring scipio's probably not one of your best options right because you have troop training buildings and you're going to be training troops and these buildings are unique to a specific troop type right and so there's no instance where you can have four troop training buildings that train cavalry right you can't focus on one specific um unit type right now when it comes to speeding up of course you could speed up just one building over and over and over again but for the most part for most free-to-play players you're going to have a mix of all of these troops right which means what you want to do is have armies that are specific to that troop type now we're going to be ignoring siege because siege is not good in the open field so really you have three unit types you have infantry you have cavalry and you have archers and so if you only have three available armies to fight i wouldn't recommend bringing scipio because you would be better off using those troops in a purely uh in, with a commander that is purely buffing that type right so if you only have three available i would have one army be full cav one arm army be full infantry and one army be full um full archers right and so if you have four armies well now you would still have those three and you have a fourth slot that's open you could do one of two things with that uh you could do one of three things with that with that fourth slot right you could bring another full army of a specific type with a commander that buffs that specific type um the problem with that is that you may not have enough units to fl uh, fully flesh out a full army of that specific type the other problem with that is you may not have another a pair of commanders that can really um that could really 
buff that specific troop type so you have two other options right if that's not an option uh, especially late in in a war like kvk late game you're really going to be low on troops so another option would be to bring a mixed army right and there's two things you could do with a mixed army the first would be to focus on skill damage or aoe right and that's a really good option if the open field is flooded with enemies um or if you're defending a flag or something like that uh the second option would be to bring a mixed army that buffs your nearby armies right and so that's where scipio comes in right and whether or not you want an aoe a skill damage um army versus a very tanky buffing uh support army it depends on the context of the war that you're in right but those are the two options and they're both great options and scipio is probably the best option for most players especially free to play to fill that second support tank role now once you bump up to five armies well what i typically do is i have one uh, three armies one of each troop type then i will have one skill damage aoe right that also tends to debuff because i usually use ethel fled with sun tzu um sun tzu primary ethel fled, ethel fled secondary um and then the fifth one is that really tanky uh Scipio unit that is just buffing everything around it I tend to send Scipio out last and the reason for this is because it doesn't matter what his troop composition is so I'll send out the full three armies all with their primary units right so send out the full cav full archer full infantry and then I take a look at what units do I have left right what units do I still have to work with you can take all those units again forgetting siege you could take all those units and just throw them in scipio and put them out in the field and it doesn't matter right and this is why he's so easy to use because it doesn't really matter what troops are in his um in his army now he does have talents that benefit him if he has one of at least one of each troop type um so that would you know it's good to have a mixed army but he's kind of just like a melting pot just throw what you have left into scipio slap joan of arc on there and send them out in the field and they're really going to be effective right it doesn't really matter what they're composed of now if you want to get technical um i would suggest uh putting scipio um having his army army mostly infantry units right because again tippy uh, scipio is a tank and infantry is the most tanky unit right so it just goes to uh, you know ration uh, just by rational thoughts right that you would want the most um tanky units now again you still want a mixed army because he, he, he gains benefit from that um but i would say you know if you could it would probably be optimal to have 50 percent of scipio's army be infantry and then one quarter of it be cavalry one quarter quarter of it be archers that would be you know if i were to reason that would probably be best or you could maybe even have you know 66 percent infantry and fill in the rest with what you have left but again that's my thought process and that's how i would use scipio now why do players say he's bad right why do why do late game pay to win players say that he's bad well um there's a couple of reasons uh the first is that if he gets focused by t5 players he's he's still going to crack right he's still going to get kind of melted because you know he is a great universal commander but the buffs that you get from a specific type just overwhelm all the buffs that he has to his tankiness right so he still will crack under that pressure so if he's focused um then you know he's still going to get melted by those late game t5 players who are very very powerful so that's why later in the game he is less useful than he is in the early game where there's less t5 players less players with maxed expertise legendaries uh, and it's for that reason that a lot of you know late game high paying players don't like to use Scipio, but in my opinion i think most people are not going to fall under that category right most players are free to play like that's just the reality and if they're not free to play they haven't spent that much right they've spent less than a hundred dollars on the game which means that they don't have that many other options and for that reason i think Scipio is still worth talking about because he's still good to use you know if you have five armors five uh armies five possible armies you have to fill them right and Scipio is so easy to use and he he really brings a lot to the table with joan of arc now another thing that we can talk about is what if you don't want to use him with joan of arc right like let's say you have joan of arc set up for something else let's say maybe you built joan of arc full support tree so you can you can maximize the amount of her rejuvenate skill and you have some you know unique build with joan of arc that really utilizes that right 
so let's say you don't want to bring none of arc what else could you do with Scipio right if it's not her well you could have Scipio primary you could have um you could have Richard as a secondary because he's very tanky right he's very tanky in the open field um you know it's unlikely that you would have an expert expertise to Richard as a free-to-play player but maybe you do um and in that case you know you could totally use Scipio as the primary with a Richard secondary is that the best use for Richard probably not but you could do that same thing with Charles Martel he has a shield that absorbs damage right and that's just amazing for a tanky unit the only downside is he does have skill damage so I would recommend switching around those talents that we talked about before that that focus on having no skill damage um for your for your army you could also um pair him with Julius Caesar uh, yeah, right yeah. because Julius Caesar actually doesn't have active skill damage he increases your attack and defense by 20 percent he actually has a 30 percent damage bonus he also reduces damage uh taken right he also um increases maximum troop capacity by upwards of 15 percent so it would be totally reasonable to assume that Julius Caesar would be an excellent secondary um commander for Scipio because he also has the same trees right he has the same talent trees so they're really very similar commanders except Julius Caesar is just very hard to come by right he's just very hard to get um and I wouldn't really recommend putting a lot of money into Julius Caesar because or, or a lot of um legendary commander sculptures because there are other better options like Richard and Isong Ye and plenty of other choices right so if you happen to have a very very well skilled Julius Caesar um you could use him as a secondary to Scipio and that would just really play to Scipio's strengths as a tanky commander at the cost of not bringing Joan of Arc to the battlefield um and with that being said there's not that really not really that many other great options of course Alex has a shield like that's fine um Isong Ye is maybe someone to look at because he's gonna stay on the field even longer but I would argue that there's plenty of better options for Isong Ye even as a secondary you could have Kusunoki as a primary with Isong you could have um Sun Tzu as a primary with Isong you could have Ethel Flood as a primary with Isong so you could um but I just don't think that that's the best option so really you're limited to you know I would recommend um Scipio with either Joan of Arc a Julius Caesar or maybe a Richard or someone like that right um and with that being said guys this has been a super long video um I hope you guys have a better understanding of why Scipio is still good for free-to-play players the way that I think he is the best uh, best use you know the best use for Scipio um and how he can be very versatile not only for you but to help Joan of Arc buff all of your t5 super powerful pay to win players around you with that being said guys if you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications for the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video I do plan on doing more commander guides so you don't want to miss those most of you guys at least 95% are not subscribed to the channel so go ahead and sub to the channel I would really really appreciate that comment down below if you have any questions about Scipio I'll be more than happy to help you guys out in the comments I also live stream on Twitch um my link will be in the description below even if i'm not playing rise of kingdoms if you see me live you can stop by and ask me any questions that you want about rise of kingdoms i will be more than happy uh, to answer those questions for you if you enjoyed the video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it i would really really appreciate that it helps me um, get this video out to more people and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace